so I've had a lot of uh, questions about um, the new beam connection uh, to the boat and how it doesn't break or how it's different to the old uh, beam arrangement so I'm going to go in a little bit of detail to show the differences uh, between the two beams and setups and, and why one system worked and another system will work or not work and what to look out for and what are the advantages between uh, going one way or the other. Um, first of all, we'll start with the old beam because that's what was originally there. Um, so this is the old beam connection. Um, and we'll start where it was at the boat. So here, this plate here was um, bolted to the inside flange of the deck. And you can see there's six um, M10 bolts here that held it in. This is all that all the connection point was between the boat and the beam. So there's massive stainless steel fitting here and these six beam, uh, bolts. Uh, inside the, the boat um, there's a piece of plywood that was in here to um, create a, uh, a stiffening point in behind the deck to try and spread the load from the boats uh, bolts into the hull shell. Um, and there was also a, <laughs> I'll call it a bulkhead for now, but there was a piece of plywood that basically went a thought ship under the deck here, and that was tabbed in. And, I, and when, I, when I say it was tabbed in, it was very, very loosely tabbed in to say the least. When I pulled it out, I literally pulled it out with one hand um, because the taping was so bad. The next point along the, the beam, is a mechanical connection via a very big pin, in this case a, a big bolt from the stainless steel lug that was bolted to the boat. We're now looking at the beam itself and the connection between the two was via a single bolt. In here was actually the martingale wire. Um, now the martingale wire um, was directly bolted to here so it could transfer its load directly from the bolt to this stainless steel fitting and into the hull. Um, now the martingale wire went from here up to the top of the seagull striker. Have a look up there. You can see the top of the seagull striker there. It was a great big 12 millimeter wire and it went from down up there down to here uh, and made this connection. So what we've got to look at is the load path of everything. How the load goes from the forestay and gets connected to the boat. Um, and it's through those connections it is where the biggest differences between the old beam arrangement which you've seen with all these mechanical nuts and bolts and pins and hinges and things compares to the new arrangement of the carbon beam uh, where everything's glued and bonded and basically becomes homogenous with, uh, with the boat. This front beam arrangement has a very major vertical component to it and a, and a small aft component to it and the torsional component is quite low because we have this pin arrangement and the forestay pin uh, where it's pinned on the um, beam here is in approximately the same point as where this beam is connected here and where the seagull striker is so there's very little torsional uh, moments being created. So the beam in this arrangement is primarily set up for taking vertical load. Um, so the forestay is pulling up and the forestay is pulling aft because the forestay is on a slight angle um, facing aft towards the mast. Um, 
as an instance in our case with our boat uh, and the four state angle that we have, if I have 10 tonnes of load in the four state, I'm going to have a nine and a half tonne vertical load straight up, and I'm going to have a 3.1 tonne load aft. So um, there's two loads that we need to address, and there's two ways that these are different ways that these loads are addressed. So in this beam arrangement, the vert only the vertical load is dealt with in this connection. So all this connection has to do is stop nine tons, well actually in this case, in case 4.75 tons of vertical up because four and a half, or well 4.75 tons is going up in this side and 4.75 tons is going up in the other side because it's balanced between the two. So this pin here and this connection here only has to deal with that 4.75 ton load vertically up. This load is then taken from this pin through this bracket and into these bolts and all these bolts have to do is stop this plate from tearing upwards and in this case 4.75 tons uh, which is quite easily achieved with six M10 bolts. Now the aft component of the load, so that's the load that's going from the front beam and, and heading aft, was dealt with in our boat with a um, this fiberglass walkway. So this fiberglass walkway here, you can see everything's all in the rubbish here, was attached to the beam at the front end here and then was attached to the boat um, at this other end here and um, Katana at the time put this lovely box in here so that you could put more rubbish in there and way down the front of your boat and um, it, was not, it was not my favourite piece of the boat but it was very good because when you were anchoring it gave a nice big solid walkway to walk from the boat to the um, front beam and deal with the whole anchoring issue. But as a sailing and a structural beam or component of the boat, this is what dealt with that 3.1 ton aft facing load. Um, so basically it stopped the beam from bending in the middle and going backwards. So here's our old four stay attachment point on the beam. Now where the four stay was attached, you'll see the four stay is attached not at the back, not at the front, and it's not even in the middle. Um, it's in a what looks to be a, a funny position, but it's not a funny position because if you actually project the line of the four stay down and through the beam to what we call the neutral plane of the beam, so that's in the middle this way and in the middle that way, this line of the four stay will actually connect in this middle point inside the beam. And what that does is it doesn't produce any torque or torsion through the beam, through rig load. Um, and that's very important with these um, uh, pinned arrangement um, beams. And I'll show you in a moment um, the outboard connection again and why that's, that's important. Um, you can also see here it's quite a big lump of alloy and it's welded on. Um, there's a lot of things that are not so nice about this arrangement, but it works. <laughs> yeah, so I can't complain about it too much because it does work even though it's not the nicest arrangement. Um, and there are better solutions, um, particularly working with alloy these days, uh, for the connection with nuts and bolts and rivets. Um, this is an old school method and it's worked very well and it's done 43,000, 45,000 miles, so it obviously worked. So back here at the outboard end again with this connection. This connection here is only designed for vertical load and uh, a compressive load um, and is definitely, definitely not designed for any torsional load. Any torsion through here, because these plates are quite well spaced here, will basically twist and buckle these plates, particularly that they're quite a long span from the end of the beam here. Any torsion through this beam arrangement turns quite bad and quite ugly quite fast. Um, and there's probably been a lot of examples uh, of beam failures and they're in this junction here. 
and it's usually due to torsion. Um, and it's not just torsion through the beam de um, delivered from uh, rig tension, but particularly in boats that have really long and slender bows, um, the boats can twist and rack. So the, the two bows will do this. Uh, and when you've got a beam connection between the two, it creates quite a large um, twisting or torque moment between in the connection and this can actually create a failure point here as well. Uh, this mechanical pin and bolt arrangement is quite good if you do have a fairly flexible boat um, and the bows do move around a bit. This allows for that to happen and it won't break all the connections if that flexibility is, is allowed for in this, this junction here um, and that's what we'll, one of the things we'll talk about with the new arrangement and how we deal with the whole torque thing through the um, beam because the beam becomes all of a sudden a very structural member of the boat whereas this is not a structural part of the boat. So the load of the forestay you can see is not directly vertical straight up and down it is not it is actually pulling backwards a bit um, and this is a very important and a very critical thing to look at with the beams and the loads that it applies to the beam but what we're going to look at is the forestay is pulling in an upward and slightly backward direction now if we go closer to the forestay here we're going to look at how the load is transferred out of the forestay so the load is transferred out of the forestay which is this toggle here and in our case this toggle is connected to this big nitronic rod here and this nitronic rod here then transfers the load into this carbon part of the beam here so this pin is pulling up or in the direction that the um, the forestay is pulling on it into the carbon here. Now we're trying to transfer the load from this pin through all this carbon beam here into the seagull striker here. So the pin is pulling up on the on the martingale. So the martingale wants to go up like this. That load is then transferred into this carbon spreader, which is the seagull striker. So the load is now going up. We need to keep this martingale and seagull striker and the forestay and everything from going up and the way we do that is with the martingale here so the martingale strap is a continuous fiber strap that runs over the top of the seagull striker here and it takes the loads and it shoots it down each side so this strap is now taking load from being vertical and then it's transferring it or translating it into this funny angle here and funny angle there and pushing that or putting it in towards the ends of the beam. Now what's happening here is the martingale is actually pulling on the beam like and in this angle the angle that it's uh, connected to the to the beam. So it's actually putting the beam into compression this way and it's actually trying to lift it a little bit vertically as well but there's actually more compression than there is vertical component um, so there's this beam is being compressed quite hard and the vertical component of the whole arrangement is actually being transferred into this socket now this socket here you can see is substantially bigger than the six bolts that used to be there. Now we've transferred all the load into the beam area here through this martingale strap being taped on the top here and eventually, maybe the next day or so, I'll transfer the martingale strap loads um, they'll be transferred into the bottom side of this beam so all of the load that's in that martingale is being transferred in and around this beam here 
because the beam's quite large and very stiff, so it transfers the load very well. And it transfers that into the beam, and the beam goes right through our bow. It is not connected here. Well, there is a connection here, but this beam is actually glued to the boat on the inside in here. So there is three places where this beam is connected. We have carbon connecting it on the outside skin here, which we can all see and everyone knows about. But then it is also going to be connected. And when I say it's going to be connected, it's only because I haven't done the taping yet. Inside, on the inside of the hull here. And then also inside on the outboard side of the hull. So there is actually three major connections. And these connections, as you can see, are much, much bigger and distribute the load over a much bigger area than what the old connection did. This is now a very structural part of the boat and has become um, a large stiffener for the front end of the boat. So our boat is now going to be stiffener, stiffer. The issue with that is we are now taking some of the boat loads and transferring them into the beam. So now when the boat, what, the bow wants to rack up and down, the racking motion or loads is now going to be transferred from one side to the other through the beam connection. So the beam actually has to be quite stiff in torsion and it has to have quite a large torsion connection. And that is why there is a very big amount of double bias which is very good for delivering torsion through connections um, in and around the socket here. That is also replicated in the beam to martingale connection. That you would have seen in the video we did um, a lot of double bias in this connection along with a bit of uni but there was primarily double bias because I'm mostly concerned about the torsional load that's going to go through this. The compressive load is very easily dealt with by two great big lumps of X America's Cup Yacht Mass trying to now crush this middle piece here. So the compression load is pretty easily dealt with. The bending moments are pretty well dealt with by having the whole martingale arrangement on there. Um, so that connection is now dealt with with different types of fibres and different places and different uh, elements taking these different loads. What we haven't talked about yet is the aft component. So before we had that sort of gangway uh, walkway thing, now we have our lingeron. Now the lingeron is far, far superior to our walkway as far as sailing and load carrying is concerned. Um, it's not so good for when you're anchoring and you want to walk out on a nice big walkway, but you know, then it's the losses. The big advantage of our lingeron is we can hang tons of different sails off of it. We can hang our Code Zero, our A3, our A2 spinnakers off the end of it here, once I finish putting a proper pin with our uh, elastic <laughs> electrical tape around it, this is where all the big gear gets hung from. So we can put big sails on here. And this lingeron is so stiff, I don't need any water stays, whisker stays and all the rest of it. It is a lump of a thing, um, quite substantial. Um, then the next connection is obviously the forestay. And the connection that we haven't shown very much uh, is where the storm sail and trinket will get attached. <laughs>